she sent me for a bio was, what's the difference between a novice trader and an experienced trader? Well, Melissa Armos says an experienced trader knows that having advanced technical skills can make a huge difference in making or losing money. And it ultimately comes down to a full comprehension of price and how to utilize the reading of the price for profit. Are you with us, Melissa? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can see your screen. Now we need to unmute you. Muted. There. Unmuted. How about now? Can you hear me? Yes. Welcome to the webinar. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, Sherry. Hope everyone's doing well out there and staying safe wherever you happen to be. And uh, today, yeah, I'm going to talk about gaps. I'm going to talk about price. I'm going to talk about trading. And I'm also going to talk about making money, which is everyone's favorite topic, and even volatility, because right now, uh, the market rallied and now we're falling. And it's a very significant week for the market for two reasons. One, Microsoft reports tonight, and two, Amazon reports tomorrow night. And both of these things could affect the market. We didn't have any follow through in the SPY in the last 24 hours higher. And we got very close to getting up over the level of resistance and back to new highs. So this will be interesting to see if we can do it this week. There are longs that are trapped. There are people short this market betting that it's lower. So it's a very good time to be trading right now if in fact you know what to do. So what do I do? I read gaps and I read price action in gaps and I own the stock swoosh. I started the company uh, 10 years ago and I've been trading since 2008. If you have questions, you can email me at melissaatthestockswish.com or you can ask me here. In fact, let me make sure if I could see if there's any questions in the chat. Uh, let me just see where it is. Okay, I do see the chat here now. And if anybody has any questions, you can just plop them in the room and I will answer them as we go along today. So volatility is something that if you know how to play it, you can make money on. And so I'm looking for the volatility that's happening in the gap. What is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. The US stock market closes every day at four o'clock and opens the next day at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, five days a week, okay? So I'm looking for that trading action that happens in the post-market and the pre-market period because there are people that trade that. I don't trade that, but I watch that level of trading. Another earnings that's out tonight that you're gonna see post-market trading in is Tesla. That's a big watch for tonight, although I don't think that that's really going to be affecting the market. But getting back to what I was saying, I'm looking for opportunity as an active trader. I'm always looking for opportunity. And volatility creates opportunity if, in fact, you know how to play it. And it can really get you out of a rut. You could be going for a while, pretty much scalping, making five cents here, 10 cents here, 25 cents here, and not really getting any big moves. The benefit of volatility is that you can get big moves, okay? The idea is to spot it first and then play it in the right direction. And how do I do that? I do that by seeing the gap. So for example, I'm not in Microsoft, but it reports tonight. It is going to gap. I don't know if it gaps up or if it gaps down, but it is going to gap because it has earnings and it's going to move. So once I see that, I have a system that I rate it to determine if I'm going to go long or short it tomorrow, for example. Okay. And again, Tesla is the other one that's out tonight too. So what creates volatility? The volatility that we as traders want to play and make money, money on, well, there's several things. Could be news events could be, and we've had a lot of these this year, particularly with COVID, uh, could be earnings, like I'm looking for in some of the things out tonight. So that's what happens. Something happens that's unexpected, that turns the stock or the market, for example, in an unexpected direction. The idea is being able to spot it before it actually moves. And how do I do that? I do that by seeing it in the gap, okay? Now, what am I looking for in the gap? I'm looking for power money. I'm looking for institutional money, big money, big professional traders, hedge funds, large traders. I'm looking to see what they are doing with their positions. Are they buying? Are they selling? Are they shorting? Okay, so I'm looking to spot institutional money in the gap, not retail money in gaps. Very often that money is incorrect. And that's one of the reasons why many, many traders lose, okay? So sometimes I may see something that an institutional money is doing in a stock 
take a position, be down, actually be down in the position before it goes, before I'm up, and then it goes. That happens sometimes when I do option trades, okay? The previous rep was talking about uh, taking overnight trades and having margin calls. I never put myself in that position. Why? If I do an overnight, I'm in an option. What is an option? An option has a fixed risk. You pay the cost. The most that you can lose at an option is the cost of the trade. If you take one contract and it costs a dollar, that's all you're going to lose. You can't lose any more than that, okay? So I don't do swing trades on margin overnight. And the day trades that we do are equity trades on margin, but we're flat by 4 o'clock every day. The fact that people take trades overnight and people take swing trades overnight and they take them on margin and they do get margin calls is one of the other reasons why sometimes the gaps that I happen to play on go so well. Because people are upside down from a gap that happens in the morning, again, could be a gap up, could be a gap down, and then the broker forces them or, or, or exits the trade and they have a margin call where they have to put up money. So if you're wanting to be conservative, how do you do that when you're trading to be, um, I call it like the insurance, you put in a stop. So you have a limit order stop if you day trade, and the stop is essentially what the cost of the option is if you do an option trade, okay? And again, if anybody has any questions, you can plop them, plop them in the room in the chat. So I look for institutional money in the gap, and that's what I do. So if you're here, maybe you're here to learn a little bit about more what I do, or you need a system to trade, which I think is very important, a system or a strategy, and you're looking for something to make money on a regular basis. This is, this is a big problem for traders. They're, they are all over, all over the place. They'll go long, they'll go short, they'll do trend trades. They will do all kinds of different things with different indicators, okay? I don't use any fancy dancy indicators in my trading. It's really just reading the price action in the candlesticks, which I look at Japanese candlesticks. And my method has about an 80% win ratio, all right? So I'm looking for institutional money and then I'm capturing those moves in a small time period in on the day if I'm day trading. If I'm doing an option, I might do an option for a day trade or I might take an option where I hold it for a few days, okay? I'm usually looking for 50 to 100% return on investment but I'm always looking for institutional money. And institutional money is in charge. It's in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even if you think it's not there, it is, okay? So a big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market, stocks, and creates momentum. And this, again, goes back to the volatility part of it. That's how you're making money as a trader, where you can short 500 shares of something, get a dollar drop, and make $500 in five, 10 minutes. That is what I would call momentum, for example. Okay, we did snap today. Snap dropped, snap gap down, snap was a short. You could have done it as a put, um, but actually it was a better day trade where you would have done it today on margin. But anyways, I'm looking for stocks and gaps that create momentum and sense the trend in charts with what? Institutional money. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of the power in a stock. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. And that's how it's gonna be a lot easier for you as one individual to make money, okay? Because you're never gonna move a stock either up or down. No position size that you could take would ever do that. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times, and I can't stress it enough. And people, people very often don't understand what I mean when, when I show this in a chart, and we're gonna talk about some charts here today. But becoming a successful trader and investor requires becoming a specialist in defining where the institutions are buying or selling a stock. Learning advanced technical analysis is required, and this is what I focus on. So it's chart reading, it's price action. That's what technical analysis is. It's past price data that I'm looking at to determine future price data. I'm reading price action in charts, that's it. I'm not gonna read the earnings reports or look at the fundamentals of Tesla or Microsoft or Amazon when the earnings come out this week. I'm gonna see what happens in the price action to make my trading decisions whether I'm gonna go long or short it, okay? So I don't look at fundamentals. If you like fundamentals and that backs up your reading of the technicals, fine. But you gotta be very careful because the technicals, what's happening right now in the price supersede the fundamentals, okay? Remember, we're not long, long-term investors as active traders. As an active trader, you're in, you're out. You're in, you're out. I call it chunking it out. 
You're pulling, you're taking a trade, you're pulling money out of the market, you're booking it. You're using your money to take another trade, you're pulling the money out of the market, you're booking it, okay? Or if the trade loses, you're killing it, okay? Comprehending how to redefine and trade with this power, this institutional power, will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. So elevate yourself, your trading, and your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading in the market. And again, this is a very interesting time right now, considering what the market's been doing. I mean, you know, you have a lot of longs in the market, but you have a lot of these other indices that are not matching up. The Dow or the diamonds looks right now very different than the QQQs. Qs look different than the SPY. The banks and the financials are part of the SPY, and that's one, been one of the drags on the SPY this year, 2020. So if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, you could take the position in the right direction and get out after the move happens for profit, okay? But you have to understand how to trade this side of power and you need to know how to find it. It is very important to find it because that power has the ability to pay you. And not only that, the market has the ability to pay you. It's just that many people don't know what to do. It really does have the ability to pay you. And in these times right now where people are working from home, uh, you know, it's a great time to jump into day trading because if you're working from home, you also can trade at the same time when you may not be able to if you were back at the office or back at your normal job. So, you know, it's a good time to get involved and get into it this year, 2020, with the way people are working from home. So knowing how to read what institutional money looks like is essential to becoming a successful trader and you can win big trading on this side of power. So. I say focus on one thing. I typically like to do one stock a day, one trade a day, okay? But I also focus on one strategy, which is only gaps. I'm not doing a million different things, okay? I called my strategy golden gaps because it's like finding gold in the market because I'm looking for one thing that's gonna have a particular move in one direction and I never flip flop it. And again, for example, we did the snap today. Snap gap down, snap rate of good, snap was a short. So this was something that you could have played as a day trade and been out in the first hour of the day. It was a gap. Again, what is a gap? A stock gap from the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple, okay? That's what it is. So here was an example of a gap last week in Netflix, and actually Netflix gapped down today as well, okay? And I called a put in this, in this too. So here's the Netflix. Again, what is a gap? This is a daily chart. Stock closed here the night before had earnings gap down. Closed the night before around 5.28 and change, I think it was. Open in the morning here, well under 500. I think it opened like at 4.90 and change, 4.92, 4.93, I forget what the exact open was. But the stock gap down. So closed here on Thursday night, had earnings, boom. Gap down in the morning here, this is Friday morning, open, fell. And again, this is falling right now. So we did a day trade in this. Entry was 4.94.80, we shorted it, put the stop. Again, a stop is like the insurance. It's a, you put it in, if this would have gone over this number, we would have lost, it did not. But the fact is you must protect yourself. So you protect your account, so you protect your money, okay? Share quantity, 300, risk was 32.10, exit 488.50, this was a nice train. Again, short on the day, get in, get out on Friday. Profit was 1,890 bucks, okay? And actually, I had higher expectations this would fall more. It's following through today. So we'll see where really where Netflix goes here today. And again, I had called a put in it. So we'll see if this gets some, some momentum today and if this really starts to get going. But this was a gap down. So I saw this at night on Thursday night and I saw it in the morning on Friday. And I said, this is lower now. Again, there are gap ups, there are gap downs. What's a gap up? This is a gap up. Stock post here gapped up. This, I don't remember the reason for this, but this was from the 9th to the 10th. This gap was earnings. This was something though. This might have been with the market, might have been news. Anyway, stock closed here at 510, open here at 520. You could have gone long here. This was a nice move up. So you would have bought the stock here. Here it was a short. But what I do is figure out which way to play it in the morning in the pre-market before 930, okay? Not every gap up though follows through higher and not every gap up is a long, and not every gap down is a short. 
Here, for example, is a gap up that was not a long. The next day after this one, closed here, gapped up, sold off. So if you went long here, you lost, okay? So I rate the gap using a rating system of the daily chart to determine in the pre-market, or you can do it in the post-market if you see it at night, where the stock is going to go on the next day, or if I'm doing an option in the next week to two weeks. I usually do options out within one to two weeks. Any questions here so far? But golden gaps have huge opportunity because they spot power money. For example, what was happening there in the Netflix? Netflix had selling, okay? Netflix made new highs last week. Netflix then had selling on the gap down. Again, what the earnings said fundamentally, I don't read, I don't pay attention to, I wouldn't even have time to do that. So how do you find golden gaps? You can scan them in the morning, you can scan them at night to find them, and then you rate them. And I usually make a small watch list in the morning, could be five, 10 things that I go through and rate. I go through a checklist, I have 26 points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I rate them all and I qualify them. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of a stock to determine is the selling gonna continue or is the buying gonna continue, okay? This is very important. And again, not only that, is it being bought by institutional money or is it being sold off by institutional money, okay? That is what you wanna play on, not what retail traders are doing because it's institutional money that moves the market. And that's one of the reasons why you had stocks like Tesla go uh, like crazy and Apple went up to the 400 level because institutions were buying it. So there is only one thing that can move the direction of a stock, it is power money and not a little bit, a lot. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there's a lot of in the market. Okay, again, funds too, all of this. And gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. Again, I don't trade that after hours, but a lot of people do. Some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps. And some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Either way, either way, Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you denote what to do and when a change is occurring. That is how you know when the power of money will flow to you to pay you. So I use a 26 point checklist. That's how I determine what stock I'm trading and in what direction. And that tells me where the power of money is going. Now let's look at a chart here of Tesla. This is a good example. What is happening here? Or again, this is out tonight. So I don't know what this is gonna do in the earnings tonight, but I do wanna point out what the stock did in the last couple of weeks, in this month of July. This stock got bought. What happened here in this, and I had called some calls on this, I'm gonna go over one of the trades here in a minute. The stock closed here, rallied, closed here, gapped up, rallied, closed here, again, this was back in, whatever the date is here, I think this was the first of July, um, and then just ripped, okay? This was like around 1100, and then gapped up one morning, like over 100 points. Then after that, it continued another 100 points, rallied up to 1,400, and then it continued again here, and look what it did here. So from this initial gap, July 1st, okay, this is at 1,100, to this day here, which was the 13th, the stock went up to 1,800. Now you might not have gotten this whole thing. I really, I thought this was a good exit here in this day, to be honest with you. It ended up gapping up here and went to the dream target, which was 1800. But the stock went 700 points within that two week period. So this is institutional money and it bought this stock. Now again, I don't know what happens on the earnings um, for, for this, but I'm telling you, you know, this is a great example of power, okay? And specifically, you know, power money, because look what it did. I mean, this is just phenomenal. And as one trader, you could have traded this and made money. Whether you did it, whether you held it, whether you did it again and again, okay? It was a great move. So this was one that I called in it, and it was a, again, that was that day of the green bar, 
This was a one day off, but it ended up following through. We did the tests of 1420 calls. They were expensive, but it was a great move. This is taking it on the Friday and ending the Friday. The stock went to 1800. It was, I never went back and looked to see what this was worth then once it got to that point because I got out of it Friday, but this was a sick trade no matter what you did with it. This was a cost of $43 for one contract. So if you bought two, it was 8,600. If you bought one, it was 4,300. And then this is exiting it on the Friday in that green solid bar. I'll go back in a minute. You could have sold it for 150. Uh, profit was 21,400 in one day. You could have made 249% return investment. And in one contract, you could have made 10,400 with a 249% return investment. If And again, when you look at these, sometimes when I call them in the letter, this is a gap options letter I have, if, if it's outside the parameters for the cost that you want to spend, you could always take it up because something doesn't have to go through the strike and an option as long as you get in the right direction for it to work to be profitable. So you could have done even the 1440s, 1450s here and paid less. But this went the following day like crazy birds. And the problem here, which I thought, I thought this was a great exit buzz, was through the weekend. So this was Friday. This was Monday, but then on Monday it went all the way up to 1800. That was insane. So that went almost $400 to the strike. And you have stocks that do this all the time. I was just talking about this in the day trading room this morning. Again, I'm looking for volatility. I'm looking for momentum. I'm looking for big moves. I'm looking for institutional money. I'm looking for the good gaps to get moves like this every single day when I get up and every night. And this is how you make money as a trader and really get somewhere where you grow your account by doing these types of trades. Okay, you got to be, you got to know how to look for them. You got to know how to spot them. You got to know how to find them. Okay, but in this case here, again, beautiful move in one day. Now we did another one here. Again, Apple went to the dream target too, which was almost 400 it got up to. Um, and this, I think, has earnings next week or the following week. I have to look up the date for this. But anyway, look at Apple. This is a daily chart of Apple ever since the, the low down there in March. Apple has just gone straight up. This black line here is the APR moving average. The stock is hugging the APR moving average. It's not even touched the 20 pair moving average, which is the blue line. This stock is so, so, so strong. I would, I would qualify this as it's in a power trend, actually. So Apple is in a power trend up. Again, I don't know what the earnings happen when this comes out either, but we did calls in this. We did the 400 calls on Monday, July 13th, ran straight up. I'll go back and show you the chart in a minute. The cost of this was very reasonable. 325 for one contract in Apple. If you bought two and spent 11, 812, you could have sold them for 750. Again, 100% is a good goal. This was 131%. You could have made $1,000 spending $812 in Apple. I'm going to go back and show you this here. And again, if you did an advanced amount, you could have bought 25 contracts for $81.25 and made $10,625. This is in one day. Now, this was on the 13th. Let me show you. It was here. Stock closed here. Stock gapped up. I called the trade in the morning in the pre-market. Rallied. You got out. Boom. That's it. You do it. And sometimes I send the trades out early. Like 9 a.m., sometimes I send them out right before the open. You take the trade when you get it. Again, this is the options newsletter. This was a nice trade. Ideally, I like when these go immediately in the first day. Sometimes they do take a couple of days, but this, this was nice and Tesla was nice to go right away. Anybody have any questions here so far? So you, you really, you got to think intellectually when you're trading. Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Like, a lot of times people just take trades and they're like, they have no idea where they're doing it. They don't have any conviction. They don't even understand what they're doing. You know, they see something on TV or get an email about something. They just take a trade. Or they, they have no understanding of the strategy. They don't have any strategy at all. I mean, you really have to think. And I don't care if you're risking $800 or $8,000. It's your hard-earned money, even if it's a dollar. And you need to know what you're doing when you're trading. So I have everything situated before the market even opens. I know if I like anything, if I'm doing anything, or if I'm not doing anything, okay? I know if I'm doing a day trade, I know if I'm doing an option, I know what stocks I'm watching, I know how they rate. I'm looking for the directional power of the money where it's gonna move, and I'm also looking at whether I have the market's help, okay? I also look at the market and I read the market and see where the market's going to. So, I look and say, who's in charge? Who's in charge, the bulls or the bears? 
Here was another one. This was Wells Fargo. This had earnings last week. Who's in charge of this? The Bears. The Bears are in charge of WFC right now in the daily chart. I'm not in any trades in this right now, but looking at this, again, who's in charge as far as the power of money and Wells Fargo? It's the Bears. What about Goldman? Who's in charge in Goldman? The Bulls. The Bulls are in charge. Again, these are the banks. And this is Boeing. Another beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chart that we shorted a million times in 2020. Who's in charge in Boeing in this stock? The bears. The bears are in charge. The stock is not moving higher. Okay. And again, I'm talking about institutional money. You may have a temporary rally or a green move on the day from retail traders buying it. But the bears are in charge. Okay. At least for now. So once you know how to do, once you know how to trade, it's so easy to make money, but you have to know what to do and you have to have conviction. And this doesn't mean that every trade that I take wins. Some trades lose. That's part of trading, but more trades that I take win than lose. And that is when you get to the point where you have the confidence to do it, you have the conviction to do it, and that helps you then make money. And not only that, it helps you put on more risk and it helps you take trades like something like the Tesla, or, you know, that would be more on the more expensive side. And really put your money on the line to get somewhere with it. If you want to trade effectively, you cannot go with the crowd of day traders. Why? Most day traders lose. And one of the reasons that they lose is they're not focused and they never really get good at doing one thing specifically. So I've mastered gaps. I'm very good at doing it. I do it in a very unique way, a way that I personally created a very long time ago. And at the time that I created my system, I did not realize that I could do it for overnights and I, I didn't do options at the beginning of my career. But I got into them as the years went on when I realized that many of the moves that I was taking would follow through for longer term trades and that I could capture larger moves by doing options and more specifically in expensive stocks that I would never day trade. Like we're not gonna day trade on equity a stock like Amazon or something like Tesla. It's just very expensive. Now let's talk about day trades here. If you do want to do day trades and if you do want to trade a margin, and again, I use stops and I'm flat every day by four o'clock. This is CCL. We've done this a lot this year too. What? This is a short. Who's in charge in this chart? It's the bears too, okay? So we did a short in this. It was 716, entry was 1610, boom. Stop was 1650, 40 cents is a really nice uh, stop. 6,000 shares, risk was 2400, boom. Exit 1580, that's a trade. That's it, 30 cents for the 40 cent risk is a nice trade, okay? In something like this that's, that's pretty cheap or in the less expensive side, 30 cents is 30 cents and you can whop on the size in this, okay? So this was this day here. Stock close to your gap down, boom, we shorted it. And again, you can do a put in this. Some of these puts have been very cheap and they don't move as well as I think the equity trades, but you could have done a put in this. Again, here's the one minute chart. Stock close to your gap down, boom. Here's the short, get the drop, boom. Again, time of the day is 9.30. Stock drops in the first half an hour, hour of the day. We take it, we get out. That's typically what I'm looking at doing as far as day trade goes. So I try to day trade and be done in the first half an hour of the day, first hour of the day if possible. Sometimes we take a trade and we're out in five minutes, okay? But in an ideal world, I don't train, day trade all day anyways, even though theoretically I could. I like to make money in the morning and be done. Just take it and be out. And that's one of the things that's my edge as well. I'm very good at reading the open. I'm very good at reading the post-market, pre-market, and the open in the first five minutes of the day from the time the market opens at 9.30. Today, I could tell that we were gonna fall. We rallied, we tried to go green, we were green at one point, we rallied. I knew we were gonna drop and break, it took a while, but the market was not along this morning. Even when it was green, it wasn't along this morning, okay? Look who's in charge, uh, particularly who's in charge on the day, okay? Now, this was another one here we did, the QQQs. This was a short. We entered 257.66, stop was 258.75, if you join the live trading room, I call the entry, I call the stop. Shares was 2,500, risk was 2,725. This is a nice trade, this is a nice move. Again, why? Stop for the cues, this was a good stop. I know this is a little pricey. Again, you could have done puts in this. It was a short exit, 255.80, $4,650 on the day. And again, this is more than one amount, okay? 
Uh, oh, 2.35? Okay, I didn't know what time because I started late. 2.35. Okay, thank you, Sherry. Anyways, here's the cues. This was on 7.16. Here's the drop. Short it. Boom. Get the drop. Okay, this was the 7.16. Actually, here it is. Here I blew it up. So this, this is the market, this is the queue. Sometimes we do do the market as a day trade. And close up here the night before, 260.75, boom. Open down here in the morning, 258. So again, short it, get the drop. Boom, boom. Okay, again, first half an hour, first hour of the day. So opportunity sets up daily for the most part. There are days, sometimes there's slow days. But, you know, most of the days, we're done in the first half an hour, hour of the day. Um, somebody has a question. I just don't trade stocks that don't have volume. Other than that, no, I'm not looking for volume. Um, no, dark pools don't affect anything for me. I think that was the only question I see there. Apple, okay. Entry, 390. Stop is 387.80. This was a long. Okay, this was the day that we went long. Shares 1,200, 2,640, exit 390, 236. This was a day that it almost went to 400. This was a day trade. So you could have actually held this even all the way up. I think it was 398, which was insane. So I held the option. I didn't hold the day trade. This was good money. This was a nice day trade. This was quick and out in the morning. But the option and the day trade were on on this day. Now here's the daily, I mean, uh, the one minute. Here's the one minute here so you can see this. So we did it, got in, got the rally up and out. But look where it went. So like we got out of this in the morning really quick here. It was, it was, it was a nice trade. But look where it went. It was crazy. So this was just really nice call. But again, here's the gap. Stop closer the night before, gapped up. So in the morning in here, I called the option, and then I liked it as a day trade. So we did it right away, got the rally. Now, I don't do this, but what you could do is you could put the stop at break even and then see where it goes, or you could move the stop up. I typically don't do that. I just take it and get out. But this was, this was one where it really went all the way up to the dream target. So, you know, you can earn money trading. A lot of people don't because they don't know what to do, but you can learn what to do. Or you can create your own system, but it took me three years to create mine. So the benefit of coming to me is it shortens the learning curve for you. You just pay me for my information and my time to teach you, okay? But for me, myself, I'm so glad I figured this out. It was a really long road, but now that I know how to do it, trading is a lot easier for me now than it was 10 years ago. And over the years, I've gotten better at what I'm doing because my confidence has increased and, and, and I've been talking on television as well, and that helps too. And one of the things that I talk about a lot on TV is the overall market. The market is tricky to read. I don't get it right all the time, but I get it right a lot. And I think that, you know, in these times, when you're looking at specific trades, the best thing you can do for yourself is to trade trades where you don't need the market. And... Unfortunately, many traders don't do that. They need the market in the trades that they trade. Even if they're trend trading something, they need the market's help that day to make any money. And if you don't know how to read the market right, then you're going to lose more than you win. So it's better off finding something that's specific to that stock, to that stock symbol, rather than following the market because the market is tricky. Now, if you want to trade for a living, you have to have some kind of plan of action and getting back to what I was saying about working from home. This is a good year where people can start to dip into it and transition if this is really what you want to do. When I decided I wanted to do a different career, I was doing mortgages, I found out about trading and I did both while I created my system until I was making enough money to quit my mortgage job. And again, that took me three years. But for you, the learning curve should be much, much faster because you're going to learn my method from me if you want to come and do that. If you want to consistently make a lot of money in the market, the only way that will happen is if you have one, a high winning strategy, two, good money management, and three, a good mentor to follow, which just, just helps, okay? You can be in the day trading room with me after the class. It helps you to take the trades and get the calls, but you learn everything in class that you could trade my system by yourself. 
And again, I focus on the morning. I think it, that is just such an important time to see what's going to happen on the live day. And one of the benefits as well as trading is that you can do it from home. And in particularly where I am, I live in New York City and Manhattan. I mean, you know, many of the businesses are having people work from home. I mean, and so this is this is a, a new new world that we're all living in here right now. So if you want to learn my method, I teach it in the class. It's called the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap Course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. The course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. Okay, and that's what you'll come and learn from me. It's a skill, like juggling. You learn the skill or like playing golf or a sport or, or playing the piano. And that's how you get good then. You do the skill every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, over time. It teaches one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power and charts, reading support and resistance to take positions in the right direction. And again, you will focus on technical analysis and gaps. And I will teach you how to read the market, which is very important. In particular, like even if you have something like a 401k or you're managing your IRA, some people are trading their IRA. You can do that too. You can buy um, options in, a, in an IRA. And again, you can contact a broker and find out more about that as well. But trading is about chunking it out. It's not long-term investing. This is getting a move and exiting it, okay? Um, somebody's asked about a large account. I'm sorry, I'm just seeing these questions here now. I think I might have missed somebody. Um, would you need a large account to do what you're doing? No, you could trade a small account. You would, it depends how much you risk though, based on the size of your account. For example, if you have an options account, the minimum to open up an options account is $2,000. So, you know, you can't risk $8,000 then in, in, a, in a trade in Apple then in that. So your, the number of contracts and what you, what you can trade then is based on the size of your cash account. But the minimum to open an options account is 2000 For a day trading account at a retail broker, you need a minimum of 25000 and the margin's four to one. Or you can go to a proprietary day trading account with a minimum of 2500 and the margin is 10 to one. So it depends on the type of margin account that you go to, the type of broker. But you do not need a big amount of money to day trade or do options. Your risk, though, will be associated with your cash balance. Makes sense? Sorry. Um, does everybody hear me? No, what just happened there? Anyways, you have to have 100% conviction when you're trading. I say empower yourself to trade. I teach a class, it's online, it's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. And again, you can be anywhere in the world to take it. And you can be anywhere in the world to trade the U.S. market, which is really nice as well. So I'm running a special for Christmas and July special through this Sunday. If you sign up for the class in August, okay, you sign up. It's pay half now, half later. You do day two first, which would be August 2nd. And you do day one then, which is in two weeks then, which would be August 14th or August 15th. So you do pay half now, get in the room, start trading, do the one day of the class, finish up the class to the second day, and you get two months free in the trading room. So you're trading and learning all at the same time. Class tuition for the class is $69.99, or you pay for the class up front, get the two months in the room, and do the whole class then that first weekend in August. And as far as the options newsletter goes, if anyone's interested in this as well, um, I'm doing pay half now, half later for this too. So it's pay $34.99.50, and then in 30 days you pay the rest, you get one year subscription of the newsletter, you would have gotten the emails, the emails are traded to you, you would have gotten the Apple trade, the Tesla trade, and this price for the year is $69.99. This is not the class, this is the options newsletter if you just wanna trade options. And this is for anybody that wants to do the options course, which actually for July it's tomorrow, um, so if you want to sign up for this, you'd have to sign up today or you do the one next month. You get two months free of the Gap Options newsletter and the course. It's a half-day course. It's 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. July 23rd, which is tomorrow. It's $2,500 for this class. It's a half-day course. So any questions from anyone about anything here? At the end, I see it's 235 
Oh, thank you so much. And I, I just dropped those questions in there because I was afraid that they were going to lose their context. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, that, thank you for taking them on the fly. Okay, thank you. Is there any, did I get them all? They, yes, ma'am, you did. I, I usually hold them all till the end, but I just felt for context they needed to come right then in. And I, I don't like to interrupt your presentation. We really appreciated that. And thank you for joining us.